Good afternoon. Block Podcast Studio is in the building. I'm your host, Montana. Whoop, whoop. And the co-host, Vernon Tyus. Whoop, whoop. All right. So today we're going to um, learn about business, business structure, business development. But first, let me give the announcements. So um, our last class ended on Monday. So everybody has uh, finished up their, their courses um, study materials, their applications. They are nonprofits and for profits. So that class ended on Monday. The last class for the real estate class is tonight. So if you want to sit in on the real estate class just to see or, you know, feel your way through it, because our next uh, real estate class will be starting in October. Um, you can come out tonight at six o'clock at 503 East 200 Street if you just want to sit in on one of the real estate classes. Um, other than that, the next business class, the nonprofit and the for profit uh, classes are going to start September 17th at 1 30 to 4 30. September. I'm sorry, October. Yeah, I felt your eyes burning on my face. <laughs> so, uh, October 17th from 1 30 to 4 30. Um, so, come in. Uh, let me see what I want to say. Just give us a call and register. Register for the class. Um, this is the last class for the year. The next classes do not start again until January of next year. So come in for the um, last class, uh, October 17th from 1 30 to 4 30. And then our real estate class for the, the last class of the year will be October the 20th from 6 p.m. to 9. But we might change it, right? Yes. We that's might a change TBA. it. Yes, a TBA. So we might change it because a lot of people want to come. Um, but they was telling us that, you know, they work uh, second shift during those times. So we might change it to a weekend. And then that way, some people are off at least one weekend out of, the, you know, a month. And they can come to the real estate class. Um, also, if you are looking into being a insurance, a state licensed insurance agent, those classes will be starting October the 4th from 9 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock or 1.30 p.m. So uh, register for those. If you want to be a state licensed uh, insurance agent. Um, the TBA for the um, nursing assistant and the phlebotomy tech is going to be uh, to be announced. So we're going to get that to you later. But hopefully in October or late November is going to be starting. Um, also, the group home and training classes will be on October the 9th and the 23rd uh, from 11 o'clock a.m. to I think it's 5 o'clock p.m. So all those you can register, um, you know, call the number 216-815-7300 or visit our website at blot.org. So that's B-B-L-O-T-T dot O-R-G. And what else? Okay, so getting back to business. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let, well, let's recap. <laughs> so all right. what did you think about the last um business class to close out on this business class um the last business class like we always say the the class was very uh very in, intrigued by what we were talking about they were excited um they they finished their work you know and maybe one or two didn't but because of different reasons but um the majority of the class finished all their assignments they finished all the applications in class they became nonprofits the third week they finished up their 501c3s the fifth week um, their for-profit businesses are up, so they're moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Every time we have a class, I have a different appreciation of what these classes have to offer because I do admit we learn some things from these yeah, people. Yeah, learn, I learned a lot of things. So <laughs> one thing I appreciate about this class is we had, and we always have a few people, the elite, that come in here. They don't have everything together, but they understand and they grasp things quicker. But this time, this session, these elite people – they chimed in and helped with the ones that didn't pick up so quick and partnered up. Yeah. And and that spoke to, that spoke a lot towards the association. Yes. Yeah. So just in these class members here, some of them joined the association. So block members, if you haven't got with the association, get with the association. Yes. All right. But what they did was they they had, they gave a hand to these people that didn't understand and dealt with them even when it wasn't class hours. All right. Yes. So now let's talk more about the association. Okay. So the association will be having a, their second meeting is tomorrow. 
So if you're interested in joining the association or want to sit in on the associating meeting, um, it's going to be tomorrow at 5 o'clock. We have a guest speaker. I think we have two guest speakers, but right now I got one confirmed. Um, they're going to be talking about business, getting your business up and running. Uh, she has a master's degree in nonprofit, so she got a lot of interesting things to talk about. I will be one of her guest speakers at one of her events, so she'll be a guest speaker tomorrow. Um, her name is, what's her name? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It, I just went blank. I'm, I apologize. I, my mind went blank. Um, but I'm going to remember the name and I'm going to give it to you. I apologize for that. But anyway, she's a dynamic speaker. She has a lot of things that to offer. She has a couple of businesses already um, in her, you know, in her back pocket pretty much. And she is going to uh, be giving some information that you do not want to miss. Um, so if you want to, uh, be a part of the association, just come tomorrow. It's at five o'clock at five zero three East 200 street. You do not have to be a block member to join the association and just come out and network. So it's tomorrow at 5 PM. Um, the, the, the association pretty much help each other. Um, like if you're stuck with your business or you need guidance and direction instead of trying to call me or Vernon, and then we don't answer our phone because we'll be so busy answering other calls. The association is going to guide you to say, hey, this is what we went out there and we did field work on. This is what we learned. This is what we studied. This is what we got back from, you know, getting uh, property donated, getting uh, real estate, getting property um, up and running as group homes, finding funding, finding the grant that gives you the funding, finding contractors, painters, whatever you're trying to do is in this association. So it's like a link to everything where you're trying to do. So instead of you doing your business by yourself or for yourself, you can link up with somebody because um, it's hard when you're trying to do business by yourself because it just don't go as fast as you want it to. But when you link up to one of the people that, that you know, can help you do that, then your business takes off a little bit quicker, quick, quicker and faster. Sorry about that. I had bit my tongue. So, in other words, it's a close knitted network. Yeah, really close knitted yeah. network. So. And then, they're pretty much, they um, they, the majority of them have taken the block course, so they're already on the same level of learning everything that they need to know. Um, if somebody's coming in that hasn't taken the block class, the block members pretty much guide you to take the class. But if not, then, uh, pretty much they can educate you on some of the things that you don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what I've noticed about the association, uh, and what I've experienced is that a lot of people that's in this association has already been vetted out to have like minds mm-hmm. of business owners that we deal with on a regular. Successful business owners, thriving business owners, people who think about the same things that we think about, which is legacy building, wealth building, and retirement planning using assets right. other than just a stock bond or annuity. Right. Right. Um, we, we also have an initiative of um, creating not just an avenue for you to acquire businesses and real estate and stuff like that, but have a grasp, a vast understanding of how these things work by doing financial planning or financial consulting in in the um, encompassed with the with the program. And a lot of these people in the association understands that. Right. Not just financial planning, dealing with the life insurance and investments and where money go, but how to deal with the real estate. What kind of real estate uh, you can use? How to utilize it? Because you may not want to be a landlord, like mm-hmm. my tenants say, a group homeowner, right? Right. Um, and how not to own it, which mm-hmm. is the, which is you know is one of the uh, trivia's right here. How do you not own the asset and still benefit from the asset for generations to come? Yeah, and the good part about being a part of association is that you have hands-on experience with someone that's you know you're networking with that has done something or has been successful of trying something. So when we're teaching in class, it's like, okay, we're teaching it, but is somebody really actually doing it, doing the work, or did the life insurance, or did the group homes, or got a grant? So that way you can sit with them and say, hey, you got a grant, how did you do it? And then you know how people hoard information or just keep it a secret <laughs> and, and don't want to tell? <laughs> but guess what? In the association, they're going to tell you how they got it, and they're going to direct you and give you the information and guide you. They're going to do it for you, but they're going to guide you into the process of, hey, talk to this person. This is my connect. Or talk to this person. They'll help you get this grant up and running, and you will have a grant or talk to this person. So it's, it's a lot of benefits 
to be a part of the association. I can't name them all because it's a lot, um, but it's a definitely a good benefit of being it. And then that way we're like me and Vernon is duplicating ourselves for them to you can't go out. Duplicate me. It just ain't gonna happen. Anyway, so <laughs> so basically we are cloning ourselves uh, for the ones that can uh, grasp the information and uh, go out here and instruct and teach to do that thing. So hey, I uh, appreciate the association that you know they're coming together and they appreciating each other. I think there's going to be a, a fundraiser or a gift basket giveaway downtown with Miss Tolliver. Um, I have to get more information with that, but people in the association, I want you guys to volunteer and grab some bags or uh, gift gift baskets or whatever you can give her to go and give back to the community. So we'll get that information as of tomorrow um, for the ones who are coming and then volunteer to help each other and help her um, donate gift baskets to the homeless. Okay. Like I said, you can't duplicate me. And I forbid you to duplicate my channel. God bless us. We have two of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you okay? Um, <laughs> let's talk about some of the issues that we have, which is the topic for the day. All right. Topic of the is, day. I think I want to leave my job. How about I quit my job? How about the ones be like, I quit my job, Montana? <laughs> I think I want to leave my job. Okay. Because you learn how to put together a corporation, LLC. A rinky dink LLC. Yeah, or something <laughs> like that. Um, we have experienced this. Now, I, we experienced it for a long time before there was Blot, and that's the reason why we put together Blot, is that some of us in our in our community, in our culture, we put together these companies so we have an excuse to go ahead and say we're going to fire our boss. And then you fire our boss, right? Mm -hmm, right, right. And then you don't even know how to get out of bed. Yeah. Right? Uh, or you think somebody is going to run the business for you. And that's and that's not. Let's let us stop that right now. So if you are a potential business owner, future business owner, getting ready to seek being um entrepreneurs coming to block and stuff like that. Let's get the mindset right now. When you start a business, plan on spending 40, 50, maybe even 60 hours a week when you start in your business to make mm -hmm. this thing run right. Because if you think you're going to start the business just so you can be lazy and do what you want to do because you're tired of people telling you what to do, you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. It's going to cost you a whole lot in the long run. Right. Um, yeah, in, in the past, I've seen this before. I mean, it's been situations where I have um, – Help somebody being a coach, a business coach, showing them how to start a business, and they supposed to meet me somewhere, and I'm calling them and I'm calling them, and then I'm texting them, and they still in the bed at ten o'clock, eleven o'clock in the morning. Wow, yeah. You cannot be successful. Like, can you be successful like that? Sometimes that would used to be me. Like, uh, like still be me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I was playing, but no, you can't be successful. You gotta, you gotta be, you know, like, can we do, get the illustration of the baby? Of the baby. You, you gotta, you gotta, when that baby start crying, I'll be wanting to like, you know, lay down, go to sleep, <laughs> and just say, hey, you cry. But when your baby's crying, you gotta get up, right? And you gotta, you gotta maintain, like, hey, what, what's, why is the baby crying? So with the business, your business be crying, hey, you gotta put some time into your business. Okay, marketing, big tool. You gotta market the business. Another one, getting resources. So you don't have time to be sleeping. You got time to be getting it up. So if you're going to quit your job, have a plan and work that plan within like 30 days, 60 days or a 90 day plan to get a little bit going as you uh, leave your job or transition to leave your job. A lot of people want to leave their job and they don't have a plan. And then next thing you know, the income is not coming in how they want it to come in. Now they're scrambling, trying to figure something out. Now they got to go back to work on a job that they quit. And find another job to, you know, maintain the bills, but then they might be getting paid a little bit less. Mm -hmm. So they got to take that, you know, they got to take it. You, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah. I, I quit my job, you know, once I became independent in 2004, um, I, I, hit the, I hit the ground running, made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. By 2005, I got overconfident. And I start misusing. I quit that job. I start misusing the the, yeah. the the whole process. I quit that job every day I woke up. 
And then I rehired myself around 12 o'clock at noon. Okay. Right. <laughs> you know I, didn't, I didn't get a pleasure to quit my job. <laughs> I kept getting fired. So, so. so that I'm talking about me as being the boss and the okay. employee at the same time. Oh, wow. So, you know, <laughs> you say, man, I'm not doing this no more. And then you get up and you, you're doing it again. Uh, do, do not play with this. This is something that you want to take serious. Um, I used to be that guy that in the middle of the day, uh, get up late. In the middle of the day, I'm having fun. And then I was overconfident thinking that, okay, whatever it is I didn't do on Monday, Tuesday, I'm going to make up on Wednesday, Thursday, and have Friday off. Okay. It don't work that way. Nope. You have to be dedicated and get this thing flowing. All right? And then those of you that just do it because you think that a good flyer, a good video is going to take care of your commercial and bring all the business in, I want you to think about that too because there's control systems that you got to have. There's duties that you got to be responsible for and accountable for. All right? I mean, I think in, in some of these situations, we didn't got people that come in to start a business. Mm-hmm. And they don't even want to do the business plan. They sure don't want to. <laughs> they don't want to do the business budget. Nope. If you can't imagine how much money you gonna come got coming in in your new business, how you gonna leave a job? <laughs> they only want to do the operating agreement. <laughs> operating agreement. They said, "My time, do I got to type these bylaws up?" I'm like, you know what? No, you don't. <laughs> Just leave it like that. See what happens. Yeah. So if you think that you want to fire your boss, you think that you want to leave your job. Because you just sick and tired of people telling you what to do or because you just want the luxury of coming and going as you feel. Uh, it's because you just want to tell people what to do. <laughs> then maybe owning the business. If those are the only reasons that maybe owning the business is not for you. OK, because owning the business is about everything that we teach here at Block. And that is to create wealth for you and your family, create a legacy. All right, and have something that's going to have a value that's going to impact the community one way or another. Yeah. Own the business, and it's a, it's a difference between owning a business and running a business. Everybody can own a business. They can just do the Secretary of State paperwork, get your EIN, bam! You say, I'm an owner of a business. But running a business, hmm, that's a different story. So a lot of people cannot handle running a business because it's a lot of work. It's, it's just too much and then they don't realize what a big responsibility running a business is. And then people tap out. They tap out. You don't see them no more. You call them. They don't answer their phone. And then they say, oh, I, I did something else. I started something. Oh, well, you ain't finished what you started over here. So finish this over here. Here's, here's, here's the big one right here. Here's the big one that okay, I hear. Okay, big one. I'm, and I'm glad we're able to straighten some of these things out, though. Okay. All right. The big one is, you know what? What you was telling us just don't work. <laughs> Um, it ain't that it don't work. You're not working. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. All You're right. not working. And I'm going to tell you another thing is this too. You, you mentioned that owning a business, like sign up for secretary of state and get the EIN number. That's the easy part. That's the easy part. But guess yeah. what else? Some of you don't understand. You don't own no. the business when you do that. Yeah. You want to figure out how to really own your business? Come to block, right? <laughs> Um, it's the 17th of October, right? Yeah. Come in or come in before then have a quick interview. So you will learn. We just had another interview earlier today where mm -hmm. a guy thought he owned this business and he didn't. All right. Um, and learn the different aspects of controlling, running and owning your business as Montana say. Right. All right. Is it an investment? Yes. It's a big investment, but you have to invest. You're going to invest anyway, whether you come to Blot or whether you go to college, whether you go take a course downtown, whether you go to Neighborhood Connections or was a neighbor jumps or jump start, whatever it is, you're going to make an investment in yourself and in the business. Um, whatever you get out of it is up to you to go out and do whatever you learn. So am I saying Blot is the answer? No, Blot ain't always the answer. You can go somewhere else and that's for you, because I, I know a lot of uh, churches are giving um, classes now that's nonprofit and for profit. So wherever you um, go and it's in your budget, I say go there and just learn it. Learn as much as you can. Make sure that the information that you have is the right information and that you understand it. So when you're putting these LLCs together and you're putting these INCs together, you know the difference and what it means. I had a conversation with someone this morning um, and I was asking her about, the, you know, 
She already got her business up and running. She got it together. She know a lot of stuff. And I was like, well, you do. You got your operating agreement. And she had to think about it. She was like, um, it's somewhere around here. Your operating agreement, you will know if you got your operating agreement. You just like, yeah, I got my operating agreement right here. And this is what it says. It's like your your manual to your, your business, your policy and procedures on how your business should be ran, um, bylaws, everything that you need to know about this business um, you need to you need to just know it, and mm-hmm. here we teach it. So, so that and she's absolutely right. Um, remember, and I'm I'm getting back on that topic though because I just thought about something that was real funny. Remember when we hired? We didn't hire, but we employed somebody, an independent contractor, mm-hmm. groomed to own his own business, coming here and do some financial services, running his own business. Okay, showed up on time every day. Every day. Okay. Um. Every day, uh, <laughs> just to chew on his thumb and watch videos. <laughs> and, and, okay. and and this and this is another part, you know, because just because you have uh, a title and Ooh. an opportunity to be somewhere that's nice, all right, and you put on nice clothes, um, and and it gives you a, a self, you know, a, a, some self worth or something like that. It doesn't mean that you're going to make money, you know, like when you're independent, when you own a business and this, Mm -hmm. this person was independent. Yeah. And will not do any work. Just sit here and look at videos and read newspapers and chew on his thumb. Um, (laughs) Those of you cannot do people. We can't do that. We can't go to work, especially you financial advisors. You can't go to work. Just to show up to work and think you're going to get a paycheck, you got to go out there and get you some business. Yes. Got to. You got to hustle. You got to have that hustle, man. Some people don't got no hustle in them. I understand. Um, but hire somebody that do have some hustle and they can get your business up and running. Because there's a lot of people that just don't have it. They don't have no hustle in them. They want Montana to give them stuff on a silver platter. And I'm like, listen, Montana's over here hustling. So if you see me and you want to be like me, Hustling, then do what I'm doing. You got to hustle. You got to talk to people. You got to go out here and shake people's hands. You got to network with people. You got to get cussed out time to time again. But then guess what? You learn it. So you bump your head a lot of times, but it's, it's a learning experience. That way you can tell a story. <laughs> so. mm-hmm. Yep, the money ain't going to come to you. As a business owner, you got to go get it. Right? You got to go build that wealth. I'm trying to fix my, my flower right here. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, was we? All right. So. Uh, let's talk about what's going to be going on tonight. Last Tonight is the last night for the real estate class. Yes. We're going to be summing up everything. We didn't have good field trips. We didn't see flips go from 100000 to on sale on the market now for $346,000. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the opportunity to go out to um, Chesterland this week and put a bid on a property. $350,000 house going for $90,000, five bedroom. Wow. Took one of our previous students out there to put a bid on it. Um, I'm going to tell y'all right now, the real estate is out here. You just got to dig a little bit deeper. It's a different animal. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably said some things in the past, the real, you know, the recent past that I shouldn't have said that I normally don't say is that um, the market is bad. There's no such thing as a bad market. It's just a different market. All right. It's most definitely a different market, a different animal right now. And we just have to have a different set of skills. So everybody that took the real estate class in the past and that's in the current real estate class, I'm charging you to go out here and look for different types of situations with this real estate. All right. What I've seen was estate uh, issues with real estate. Those real estates that have estate issues. I've seen properties drop down by 50% of the asking price because they have to close the estate wow. within 90 days. Those are some of the resources you want to look at. You want to look at um, the legal news. Mm-hmm. You want to talk to attorneys. All right. You want to get with estate planners. All right. You want to look and see who has estates that's open that are having estate sales. That way now you can go out in here and do either do a wholesale deal mm-hmm. or purchase a uh, rehab flip with some of these deals. Right. Okay. Now, those are excellent opportunities. All right. And you learn that in real estate. You learn that in real estate learn class. That in real we estate did class. teach it. We did teach it in the real estate yeah. class, but we're gonna focus on it a little bit more now because 
Like I say, it's a new opportunity, a new market out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we don't know when the market is going to come down. Yeah. They keep extending the moratorium. The rumor is that they're going to end the mor moratorium in uh, October. Those of you that don't know what the moratorium is, it's a stay on foreclosures and evictions. So that means that um, people that are in foreclosures, then guess what's happening? They're staying in these houses for a long time. <laughs> Yeah. All right, you know the bank is not getting rid of them because the more right. you know they they can't the you know the the state is not allowing them to do it, um, but now the Supreme Court has got involved. Oh wow! The Supreme Court is saying that look, it's not fair to the landlords, um, and if it's not fair to the landlords, guess what? It's not fair to the banks as well that we cannot move people out of these houses or we can't foreclose on these houses. Yeah, but where they gonna go? It, it, look, COVID, <laughs> COVID, COVID is a long-term situation yeah. now, so they got to deal with it. They got to deal with it. They got to deal with it. So keep your eyes open for the lift on the moratorium and also keep your eyes open for some of these estate sales that have real estate in there. Mm -hmm. These houses are big and they're going for cheap. All right. How, um, we took that field trip that you was talking about, um, took it in the, what, Cleveland Heights? Oh, my goodness. The before pictures of this house – Compared to the after pictures of the house, it was like uh, st stunning. It was just what they did with the, with these three things did with this house. It was just beautiful. I took pictures. I recorded. I um, took a tour of my own self, and then I took a tour with you know you guys. I caught up with y'all. Mm -hmm. They had real cookies in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. That's what real just do. They put them cookies in there. The cookies. They had Oreo cookies in there, and then uh, the house. The stagers laid the house out. It was just, um, I talked to some of the neighbors. They couldn't believe the house because the house was the, they was said that the house was the oldest and the baddest house on the street. And what they did with that house, they couldn't even believe. Like, wow, this house is the coldest house now on the street. So the house was how much square feet? Like 3,800 or more? Thirty. I think it was 38. 38. But I mean, the good thing about it was we had three ladies. Mm -hmm. Took the real estate class. Took the real estate class. And what they did was they came across a whole bunch of obstacles with buying these houses. And they yes. overcame every obstacle. I'm proud of these three ladies. Uh, came together, invested, bought the property, flipped it. Now it's out here for sale. Right. Okay. Beautiful house. Yep. So we're running out of time. Okay. All right. So why don't we recap of what's going on in October? All right, so in October, if you um, want to come to the Blot uh, 501c3 nonprofit for profit training course, um, it starts October the 17th from 1 30 to 4 30. Please register now because seats is going quick. We only have 20 seats in the class. Um, real estate class, get into the real estate class before the end of the year. Well, get into the real estate class October 20th. This is the last one for the year. So get into that class. The group home training classes, this is. Um, she got two more, no, four more classes for the year. She is not doing any group home training in December. So if you're trying to get your group home training done, get it done between October and November because December she's going on vacation. Uh, what else is going on? Insurance class, October the 4th. Register for that one. It's going to be from 9 to 1. Um, all the information we're giving you, just give me a call, 216-815-7300, 216-815-7300. Um, or visit our blog page, bblott.org. All right. What else we got? That, I might miss it. something. That's it. <laughs> that's it. A TBA is the investment class coming up in January. Okay. We'll give you more information on that. All right. And then the uh, phlebotomy class, if you want to do phlebotomy training and the state tested nursing assistant training, we're going to do TBAs on that. So just keep on looking out for those dates. It's coming between October, November. Um, and then the, the investment class is in January. So you want to do an investment class. I would advise to get into that class. Um, because we are what we are state licensed. Yes. Facility, school, whatever you want to call it, we are state licensed now. Okay. All so, right. Um, until then, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, twelve o'clock noon. Block Incorporated. B B L O T T. dot O R G. I'm your host Montana. Woo woo. Co-host Vernon Tyus. See you next week. Peace. Woo woo.